Congressional Testimony, Reexamining the Economic Costs of Debt by L. Randall Ray Section 3. Countercyclical Movement of Budget Deficits The Role of Taxes and Transfers In the post-war period, recessions have become the most important drivers of the growth of debt. Specifically, the main contributor to recent growth of deficits in the debt ratio is the collapse of tax revenue in recession. In general, tax revenues are strongly pro-cyclical, while government spending is only mildly counter-cyclical. Footnote 4. In contrast to the federal government, state and local government actions can often be pro-cyclical. As a case in point, while the federal government was trying to stimulate the economy in the aftermath of the global financial crisis, state and local government budgets, budgets had a contractionary effect of about negative 0.4% of GDP in 2009. Follett and Lutz, 2010. End footnote. Let us first look at the spending side and then turn to the tax revenue. Section A. Countercyclicality of Spending Federal government transfer payments rise sharply, with some delay, when recession hits and then fall over the recovery. Unemployment benefits, Medicaid, and the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, are the transfer programs that move countercyclically, with unemployment insurance accounting for, on average, half of the automatic increase in spending over the 1965 to 2014 period, Rusick and Kowal Kowaleski, 2015. However, the countercyclical swing has been diminished since the recession of the early 1990s. Even the severe downturn following the GFC only boosted transfer payments slightly, and they fell off sharply in the recovery after 2009. One of the reasons for this may be the 1996 welfare reform, which replaced the Aid to F Families with Dependent Children, AFDC, with the Temporary Assistance to Needy Families, TANF program. Under TANF, the federal government prov provides fixed block grants to states, the value of which does not change automatically with the cycle. AFDC, on the other hand, was based on eligibility did not have fixed funding, and hence would be expected to increase in a downturn. Indeed, the value of TANF block grants, $16.5 billion, hasn't changed since the inception of the program. Schott, Floyd, and Burnside, 2019. In general, reforms over the past few decades have tried to make it harder for people to get transfer benefits. Hence, it's not surprising that transfers are not as effective as stabilizers. For example, the same legislation that replaced AFDC with TANF also made changes to the food stamps program. Some of the changes that could affect the utilization of the program included eliminating the eligibility of legal immigrants and placing a time limit on food stamp receipt of 3 out of 36 months for able-bodied adults without dependents. ABA WDs, who were not working at least 20 hours a week or participating in a work program. Footnote 5. The restrictions on immigrants were changed through subsequent legislation allowing access to children and the disabled and to qualified aliens who have been in the United States at least five years. End footnote. Lastly, even though transfer payments swing wildly over the cycle, their share in government spending is rather small. Hence, these swings do not affect the budget as much as changes in tax revenue. For instance, during the Great Recession, spending on SNAP reached a peak of 1.32% of government's current expenditures, and unemployment benefits peaked at 2.5% of spending in 2010. Medicaid is somewhat larger and has increased steadily over time to reach about 8-9% to of government spending in 2018. However, it is much less countercyclical 
than the other two programs. Section B. Procyclical Movement of Taxes On the other hand, the procyclical movement of tax revenues increased since the 1970s, as shown in the figure above. The growth rate of tax revenues rises sharply in recovery and falls more sharply in recession. For example, in the boom of the early 2000s, tax revenues grew rapidly, reaching a peak growth rate of 15% quarter over quarter in 2005. Tax receipts fell off a cliff in both the recessions of the 2000s. During the global financial crisis, tax revenues plummeted at a rate of 15% per year in 2009. Revenue growth rates have also been falling in the current long expansion, which is unusual. In previous expansions, growth of revenues has remained relatively flat, at above a 5% pace of annual growth. However, by 2018, tax revenue was not growing at all. The following graph shows tax revenue growth by two categories, withheld taxes versus declarations and settlements. Taxes withheld are cyclical, growing in expansion and falling rapidly in recession. However, the movements of non-withheld taxes are greater, and the amplitude of the swings increased significantly since the mid-1980s, as shown in the following figure. The increasingly large swings of revenues explain much of the volatility of deficits. A CBO working paper reaches similar conclusions. The procyclical pro -cyclical movement of tax revenues, rather than fluctuating of spending, is the main driver of the automatic increases in deficits in recessions. Over the 1965 to 2014 period, three quarters of the impact on the budget from automatic stabilizers has been due to declining tax revenues. Rusick and Kowalewski, 2015. Although the automatic changes in both tax revenues and spending affect the federal balance, the effect is not symmetrical. According to the CBO working paper, during the 1965 to 2014 period, while the deficit increased by 0.8% of potential GDP during the typical downturn, it went down by only 0.7% in the upturn. In addition, there were more periods of GDP coming in below its capacity than above it over this period, 34 episodes of slack versus 16 episodes of GDP being above its potential. Rusick and Kowalewski, 2015. As I explained, growth below potential increases the size of the deficit, while growth above it usually decreases it. Based on the two observations, we can conclude that the net impact of automatic stabilizers on the budget over the past 50 or so years has been negative, that is, biased toward deficits.